Hello everyone, uh, today we are going to solve the governing differential equation of your cantilever bar that is subjected to uniformly distributed axial load. Uh, we have already derived the governing differential equation of this particular system. Uh, this is the equation that we derived last class, AE into d squared u by dx squared plus q is equal to zero. If you have, don't know how to derive this equation, I highly recommend you to watch the previous video. Uh, we have derived this particular equation, I think, quite explicitly. Today we are going to solve this particular equation. Uh, the, why do you want to solve this particular equation? Why do you want to take this trouble? We want to take this trouble because uh, you can extract a valuable piece of information. So that is the reason why you want to solve the governing differential equation. That is the reason why you want to solve any governing differential equation. The reason is so that you can extract a valuable vital piece of information that enables you to take some smart engineering decisions. In our case, what is that valuable piece of information that you can extract? Well, this is that information. You can get the value of displacement of the bar, displacement of the bar at any point in the bar. So if this is the bar, a cantilever bar, you can tell what is the displacement at this point. You can tell what is the displacement at this point. You can tell what is the displacement at this point. You can do that just by using the power of mathematics. You, just by using the power of mathematics, you can just chuck through mathematically and you can extract this vital piece of information of displacement at any position in the bar. That is what this graph indicates. And that is the reason why you have to solve the governing differential equation. So you can do that without doing the experiment. You can extract this information without doing it practically. So that has tremendous, tremendous economic utility. So we have to rely on mathematics because mathematics best describe our universe. And we know there is a statement, there is a book by name, God is a mathematician. So we have to rely on mathematics. You have to develop an inclination towards mathematics. There is no other way because God himself is a mathematician. Okay, as I said, you can extract this particular piece of information. Uh, that is displacement at any position in the bar. So once you know the value of displacement, then what? You can take some smart engineering decisions because once you know the value of displacement, you can tell what is the value of strain d by dx. If you know the value of strain, you can simply multiply it by Young's modulus and you can tell what is the value of stress, which is denoted by the symbol sigma. You can tell what is the value of stress. And if you know what is the value of stress, you can take some smart engineering decisions. You can tell whether the material for a given load will withstand this, will withstand that particular load or not. You can tell whether the stress that the given structure is being subjected to is within a permissible limit or not. So that is, that's a smart engineering decision which has tremendous economic utility. So our objective is to find this information by solving the governing differential equation. Well, there are a spectrum of methods to solve the governing differential equation, but I'm going to use a very simple method to solve the governing differential equation. As you delve deeper into the subject matter, we will see some more involved methods to solve the governing differential equation. So let me write the governing differential equation. It is AE into D squared u by dx squared plus q is equal to zero. That is the governing differential equation. So what about the boundary conditions for this equation? I can tell what is the boundary condition. The boundary condition is the value of displacement at x is equal to zero. Now, how do we know that? That is quite axiomatic, you see? In the case of a cantilever bar, the displacement at the left extreme end is going to be zero because the bar is fixed on the left extreme end. The bar is, bar is built into the wall on the left extreme end. It is encastered. 
So the displacement on the left extreme end is zero. That is the first boundary condition, first boundary condition. What about the second boundary condition? The second boundary condition is du by dx at x is equal to l is equal to zero. So I have explained this boundary condition in the previous video. So please go back and watch the previous video that the strain at this point is going to be zero. If you want an explanation, please go back and watch the previous video. But I can tell you, I can give you a very short explanation now if you take two points at the immediate vicinity of the ball, say take one point here and take one point here. So what I'm going to do is you can call the first point A and call the second point as B. Now these two points will get displaced along the X direction. The point A gets displaced along the X direction. The point B gets displaced along the X direction. Now let us say the point A is getting displaced along the x direction by an amount let us say that it is getting displaced by an amount 0.1 units that is the displacement of the point a let us say that the point b is getting displaced along the x direction by an amount let us say it is 0 0.9999999 now what is the relative displacement between these two it is a difference b is going to be very small if the displacement if the relative displacement is very small then du is almost very small which means du is vanishingly small it is almost zero so du by dx is going to be zero strain is going to be zero strain is going to be zero at the free end here that is because the two points almost gets displaced by the same magnitude at the immediate vicinity of the free end these two points get displaced by the same amount along the x direction that is the reason why du by dx is equal to zero at the free end now how do you solve this equation very simple you want to extract that information of displacement u u is all that you need to know very simple how do you get to u? Well, integrate it two times. First, let us integrate it one time. So if you integrate this equation one time, what is that you are going to get? You'll be getting AE into du by dx. If you integrate this d squared u by dx squared, you'll be getting du by dx. And what is the integration of q? It is q into x. That is plus c1 because that could have been a constant which would have vanished when you have differentiated so that constant is integral constant is c1 that is equal to zero so if you differentiate this equation you get back the same equation so that could have been a constant that could have been a constant okay what is the next step integrate it again what is that you'll be getting a into u Plus, if you integrate this term, what is that you are going to get? It is q into x squared divided by 2. Plus, what is the integral of c1? It is c1 into x. And that could have been a constant, c2, equal to 0. So if you differentiate this equation, you are going to get this equation. And if you differentiate this equation, you will end up with this equation. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this equation and I'm going to solve for u. So u a e into u is equal to minus c2 minus c1x taking these two terms to the right hand side and I'll also take this term to the right hand side what is that you are going to get is minus q by 2 into x squared now I am going to find u u is equal to minus c2 divided by a e minus c1x divided by a minus qx squared divided by 2 into a I have got the value of u now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this term as a naught you can call whatever you want to call you can use whatever notation that you want to use 
I'm going to call this term as A0. What I have done here is I have simply taken this A to the right hand side. So this is what you will be getting. And I'm going to call this term as A0. And I'm going to call this term as A1. And I'm going to call this term as A2. Now, if you rewrite this particular equation, what is that you are going to get? U is equal to A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared. The reason why I have written this particular equation in this particular form is because it is nice, it is it looks very handy, first of all. And you don't know the values of C1 and C2. In our case, you don't know the values of a0, A1, A2. So once you know the values of A0, A1, A2, you can just feed the values of A0, A1, A2 in this particular equation and you can tell what is the value of displacement. So this is, I have simply written this because it is mathematically very conducive for me. So that is the reason why I have written this. It is simply mathematically very, very conducive for me. Already I know the value of A2. So A2 is minus Q divided by 2A. Already I know this value of A2, but I still don't know the value of A1 because if I want to know the value of A1, I have to find C1. If I want to know the value of A0, I need to know the value of this C2. I need to know this value of C2. So how do we know that? How is that we are going to do this? Well, we are going to do this by following a series of step-by-step -step procedures, logical steps. So usually this is the first step. This step is called as trial solution. This particular solution is called as trial solution and you see that it is a quadratic trial solution. Now we are going to solve this particular equation. Okay, now all we have to do is to find the values of A0, A1 and A2 or alternatively you can find the value of C2, C1. I think the value of A2 is already known here it is minus Q divided by 2AE. So let us see that how we can find the value of A0, A1 and A2. Okay, in order to find the value of A0, A1 and A2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the boundary condition. So that is going to be the second step now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the boundary conditions apply the boundary conditions. So what are the boundary conditions? Well, we know for a cantilever bar subjected to uniformly distributed axial load, what are the boundary conditions? The first boundary condition is the displacement of the bar at x is equal to zero is going to be zero. This is because it is a cantilever bar, the left hand side is completely fixed. So there is not going to be any displacement at x is equal to zero right at this point there is not going to be any displacement so the displacement at x is equal to zero is going to be zero that is the first boundary condition so what is the second boundary condition the second boundary condition is the strain at the free end here that is going to be zero so du by dx the strain at x is equal to l is going to be zero the strain at this point is going to be zero we have already given the explanation of why the strain at the right extreme end is going to be zero is because it is not going to experience any strain at all. The two points at the immediate vicinity here, they get displaced almost by the same amount. And that is the reason why the strain at the right extreme end is going to be zero. There was an analogy that I gave in video one, uh, in the previous video, that uh, persons hanging onto the ceiling, the strain experienced by the last person's foot is going to be zero. The last person's foot is not going to experience any strain. That analogy is there in video one. I highly recommend you go and watch that video in order to understand the second boundary condition. Now the first boundary condition is at x is equal to zero, the value of displacement is zero. All you have to do is put x is equal to zero here put x is equal to zero here, and the value of displacement should be zero. If you apply this boundary condition on this particular trial solution, let us see what happens.
to the right hand side it is a naught plus a1 into 0 that becomes 0 plus a2 into 0 that becomes 0 that is displacement and that is also equal to 0 so from this particular equation what you are going to get is you will be getting a naught as 0 so we have got the value of a naught immediately we are able to retrieve the value of a naught so let me put a tick mark here i know now know the value of a naught all i have to do is next i need to find the value of a1 uh, what is the value of a1 well apply the second boundary condition the second boundary condition is saying strain du by dx at x is equal to l is zero in order to apply the second boundary condition first i have to find the strain which is du by dx well you know how to find du by dx du by dx if you differentiate this particular equation differentiation of a constant a naught is going to be zero differentiation of a1x is a1 plus differentiation of a2x squared is 2a2x and the boundary condition is saying at x is equal to l which means that you have to put x is equal to l here the value of strain is going to be zero so the strain becomes zero all you have to do is put the value of x as l so 2a2 into l so this gives the value of a1 in terms of a2 now we already know the value of a2 from this particular equation but for now let us pretend let us assume that we don't know the value of a2 because i'm going to tell you that there is another method to find the value of a2 we already know the value of a2 from this particular equation the value of a2 is minus q divided by 2ae for now let us pretend let us assume that the value of a2 is not known so far let us see how let us figure out how we can find the value of a2 now we have got the value of a1 in terms of a2 now in the first step i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to modify this equation since i know the value of a0 which is zero and since i know the value of a1 in terms of a2 i'm going to modify this equation so that will be step number three now step number three is to modify the particular equation so let us modify the equation that is step number three i'm going to modify this equation u of x is equal to a naught plus a one x plus a two x square i'm going to modify this particular equation so sorry for the poor clarity i'm just going to fix it just going to, i'm going to fix it now so i just yeah i've got a fresh page oh, i think i just fixed now so i'm going to modify this equation u of x is equal to a naught plus a one x plus a two x squared let us let me modify so u of x is a naught is zero and a one is minus two a two l so it is going to be minus two a two l into x plus a two x squared so u of x is equal to if i take a2 common outside i can rewrite this equation as x squared minus 2lx so i'm just flipped these two terms that's it so if i know the value of a2 now i can tell how the displacement varies with respect to x i can tell this curve all i need to know now is the value of a2 now for time being we are assuming that we don't know the value of a2 because i'm going to tell you another method to find this value of a2 because that is the usual procedure that is followed that is the usual procedure that is followed to solve the differential equation for structural problems for a vast majority of structural problems okay now governing differential equation is a into d squared u by dx squared plus q is equal to zero what i'm going to do is i'm going to find d squared u by dx squared that is easy you just have to differentiate this equation two times so if you differentiate this particular equation two times one time differentiation will give you 2x two times differentiation will give you 2 and here if you differentiate it one time you will get 2l minus 2l 
And if you differentiate it twice, you are going to end up with zero. So differentiation, differentiating this particular equation two times, you are going to end up with two a two. So that is the value of d squared u by dx squared. And all I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this value of d squared u by dx squared, I'm going to plug it, plug that value in this particular equation. So what is that I'm going to get? I'll be getting ae into, what is d squared u by dx squared? That is 2a2 plus q is going to be zero. And from this particular equation, I'm going to get the value of a2 as minus q divided by 2ae, which is exactly the same as the value that we got from this particular equation. Minus q divided by 2ae, it is minus q divided by 2ae. So now I got the value of a2. All I have to do is substitute the value of a2 in this modified triangle solution so that you can now tell what is the value of displacement. So now I'm going to write the solution now, u of x is equal to a2 here, it is minus q divided by 2a into x squared minus 2lx, x squared minus 2lx. I can rewrite this particular equation as q divided by 2a into 2lx minus x squared. That's it, I have got the value of displacement. This is the answer. Now from this particular equation, I can find du by dx, which, is, which will be strain at any point. And I have simply, I'm, I can multiply it by n smallest to get the value of stress. And if I know the value of stress, I can take some smart engineering decisions. I can tell whether the material with the withstand will withstand the load or not without having to measure it practically. So that has tremendous, tremendous economic utility. Thanks for watching.